Hello folks, it's a wonderful Friday morning and uh, I've been here 10-15 minutes to try and start let's turn this radio off to try and start these control boxes for the cold rooms um, I'm clipping at the minute you can see these little bits of uh, cable they're the jumpers to go in between these terminal blocks uh, but uh, I need a new glue gun so the glue guns that I've got one of them is a silver line old jobby this takes 11 12 mil glue sticks and uh, I don't have any of them and this one here this little thing which I've broken this takes 7 millimeter glue sticks which I don't have any of them either uh, so Luckily for me, Gemma's working with me today, so I've sent her across to Tool Station. I know. Can you imagine me not going to Tool Station? I could have left her here while I went across, but no, no. Gemma's gone and done the run for me. She's picking me up a new glue gun and a kilogram, yeah, a kilogram of glue sticks. So hopefully that'll be enough for us to make all these boxes. I'll just put you on the tripod. So hopefully that's enough for us to make all of these uh, control boxes um, to glue all the components in there. I do however think that I've got enough components to at least complete the three main control boxes. So if I do, there's a very very slim chance that we might see the whole thing in action today. Which reminds me, I do have to go and order some glycol because we will need to put some into the tank. Mm, and I don't have to use food grade glycol this side either. That's a little bit cheaper. For the fermenters, we always use food grade glycol, the monopropylene glycol. But in, uh, in the refrigerant side, it really doesn't matter because there's no chance of cross-contamination. I might see if tool stations sell it and get Gemma to pick me some up on the way back. Now there's an idea. We can have the old shebang running then. Right, to the computer! So I've been upstairs, had a look at the prices of glycol and quite frankly we're only going to save around 20 quid over 40 litres of glycol if I buy the, uh, if I don't buy the monopropylene glycol, what's the other one? Polypropylene? Monoprop? Uh, anyway, the car antifreeze is the toxic one and the monopropylene is the food grade one. And like I say, the price point isn't huge between the two uh, for the quantity that I need. So on reflection, I'll probably just go for the food grade stuff. And then at least I know if I need to pinch some glycol out of a tank to get me out of a tight spot, then I can always dip into the cold room tank or vice versa. And it doesn't matter if we mix anything up. Uh, the concentration of glycol that I'm looking for for the chiller is around 40%. That means that the freezing point of the liquid is minus 22 degrees Celsius. So that would be um, the freezing point where the glycol contacts the cooling coils within the chiller itself, not the set temperature. So if you want to achieve um, a certain set temperature for your glycol bath, generally what you'll do, I think it's a rule of 13 degrees colder is what you dilute your glycol to so that uh, the glycol that comes into contact with the cooling coils in your condenser or evaporator uh, within the system that can be 13 degrees colder than your set temp so it prevents any slushing going on in there so if we want to set the glycol bath at uh, minus 10 degrees then we want a freezing point of around uh, 22 minus 22 I think it's 13 degrees it could be 13 Fahrenheit not Celsius but if you're interested in this just simply search uh, glycol freeze point chart on Google and it pops up and uh, you can even read the concentration of your glycol using a refractometer which we all have in the brewery anyway so it's really convenient in that respect but yeah looking at it um, I don't think I'm gonna get the glycol today and no nowhere local does it in kind of 25 litre jugs anyway I'm gonna have to order it from niche solutions which is a company where I buy all my cleaning products from anyway so I'll probably wait until I need some more caustic or some more paracetic acid and then at least I can order a couple of jugs of stuff to try and get free shipping 
you know, always thinking. So what I'm going to do instead is continue with these boxes and we'll get them wired up as much as possible. And if we can get them turned on, we can run the system for show with just water in, you know. So we might be able to do that before end of play today. She's returned, bless her. Look at this. So it's a rapid multi-purpose glue gun, EG111, for repair and simpler jobs. It comes with 500 grams of sticks, and I also bought a kilogram of sticks. So we've got plenty of hot melt for future projects, of which there will be many, we know this. So let's get into this blister packaging, which is my least favourite packaging really does my uh, head in because it cuts you. Right, so all the glue sticks are just loose, so let's just grab them all out. I can already feel the sharp edges on this horrible, horrible blister pack. And finally, the gun itself. Don't need them instructions. Cap off the plug. First thing we're going to do is see how quick this heats up. Because they should be pretty quick. Uh, da -da -da -da. So it's a 250 watt gun. That's some power, quite frankly. So, she's in. We've got a stick in the back. Oh yes, there we go. She's pumping. Right then. She's a not a hotter yet. We'll give it a minute. Uh, nothing so far. I'm not pulling the trigger hard because that's how I broke the last one. Pull the trigger so hard because she's just impatient waiting for the glue to come through. And uh, yeah, it ends up just killing it. It's quiet. I thought there was a little buzz into it then, but no, it's just me. Tinnitus, maybe. Well, this is real time. So you'll obviously be able to see how long it took to heat up by rewinding the video and counting the seconds or minutes as this is going. So what are we going to glue in? Let's just leave that there for a second. I need to glue in um, an earth terminal block in that corner so we can get another block out and uh, we need an earth terminal and a valve connection terminal so I need two sets of two so we'll get in there with the Stanley knife there's one two so that one in there I like to copy the other boxes you see so they're all identical and that one in there have we got glue? Do we have glue? 
Well, I can feel it's filling the, there must be an internal hot melt chamber in there. But we're not there yet. So I'll cut some more of these blocks. These terminal blocks are the ones from Screwfix. They look a little bit better than the Wilkinson's versions. So uh, they're a harder plastic if you know where I'm coming from. I used to pop them in with screws through these centre pieces here but I quickly realised that if the screw was too big you could start to bridge the gap between the two terminals if the screw cut through the plastic on either side. So these days where possible I prefer to glue them into position and uh, if the internals of the control unit is getting hot enough to melt the glue, here's the glue then it's uh, it's getting too hot frankly there we go we have glue we have glue flowing the glue is flowing albeit slowly but there's enough there that's good enough for us it's not a non-drip gun by the looks of it, which is a shame. But yeah, she's flowing. She's flowing and she's doing a job. Right, well, there we go. Anyone who's interested in the timings, however many seconds that took is how long it took. Right, let's get on with this build. Find somewhere for all these sticks. And just like that, another day is gone. It's actually five to five. We've managed to get one of these boxes fully complete. And uh, there are three on the table, all in several states of completion, which I ain't gonna have the time to do tonight. It is long weekend, bank holiday, Friday night. So we're gonna wrap it up. This is the one box that I've got finished. So this one will sit nicely up here. I'm just unsure where to mount it. I'll probably want to do some playing around with maybe a little panel for it to sit on so it's not flapping around in the breeze, if you know what I mean. Uh, but yeah, there's lots of wiring to do, so I've got to squeeze the other cable into the, into the cable gland. That one's got to get in there as well. And then I've got to do some soldering for the, 20, uh, the 12 volt power supply. And then I've also got to cut into this recirculation line here um, and tee off of that to run through the relays so the relays can turn this pump on and off. So all in all, oh, I also want to get in there as well where we put the STC and mount the 12 volt power supply in there. So. 
yeah all in all there's still a lot of jobs to be done but we'll pick them up next week folks because like I say I'm gonna jump in the car uh, Gems here she's done some more casking again today which is a fab job so uh, yeah it's time we sign out have a good weekend everyone out there uh, and anyone who's interested Labour nailed it in our district 37 out of the 47 seats see you tomorrow